Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So, um, I'm actually trying to put two videos out a week, so let's see if I actually can do that. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and then I will be putting out one again twice a week. Let's hope that it actually works out, because I'm kind of flaky. So today's story is kind of a historical one. Um, I found this very interesting because, you know, there's a lot of stuff that we don't realize happened in the past. We usually think that evil is a 21st century invention, but that's just not true. Evil has been around for a very long time, and so have serial killers. And even more shocking is that some of those serial killers were women. So I'm going to be pronouncing a lot of names that are not in fashion anymore, and some are in different from different places around the world, so please forgive me if I do pronounce anything wrong. I don't mean any offense by it. Um, I'm just not good at pronouncing those kind of names, so I'm just going to do my best. So hopefully you guys can forgive me on that. So today's video is going to be about Belle Gunness. Born November 22nd, 1859, in Salvu, Norway. Her birth name was, and this is where I'm going to start pronouncing things, and please forgive me. Brynhild Paul's daughter Stress. Oh. She was the daughter of a stonemason, and living up in her small village, she was dirt poor. Her family was barely able to get by. Belle immigrated to America in 1881 in search for the American dream. Now, this will be something that is shown throughout the story, is just this woman's complete greed and just her need for money. Whether that because of her childhood being growing up poor in the village, or whether that just is a cop-out and she was just insane, I'll let you be the judge of that. In 1884, she married her first husband, and his name was Mad Sorensen. Shortly after marrying, the couple experienced a devastating fire that burned down both their home and their business. The couple had four children together, Caroline, Axel, Myrtle, and Lucy. Now these children are all close in age, and the youngest two, Axel and Caroline, would unfortunately meet an untimely death. Shortly after the fire, Belle and her husband got a settlement from their insurance policy. The fire was named inconclusive, so they couldn't tell if it was arson or from natural causes, so the insurance just paid out. The couple also had a foster daughter named Jenny Olson. After the fire, the two youngest children, Caroline and Axel, would meet an untimely death. The reason for their death was determined to be acute colitis, however, this was suspicious to the family. Nothing was ever found of it, and it was just ruled as a natural death. Death was not always far from Belle, and unfortunately her husband would later die as well, shortly after the death of her two children, and his, was named, uh, and his death was ruled as a heart attack. Now, the coroner, that, the original doctor that performed the autopsy found traces of poisoning, but it was quickly thrown out because they were like, this is not enough evidence, we can't, like, this woman's grieving, like, especially with the time period, you know, it was never thought that women could do something like this, and so it was basically just pushed aside, even though the family was demanding that they make an inquiry. Belle actually received another insurance policy, a life insurance policy from her husband, and then she also had two life insurance policies on her children, which she was paid. Now, the one on her husband that was taken out Actually, she took out two, and that day that he died was the day that the two policies overlapped, so she got the maximum amount of money. And the poisoning that the original doctor said could be the cause of Mads' death was strictine. One of the most common symptoms of strictine poisoning is horrible stomach pain shortly before death. And interestingly, acute colitis is actually very similar in the fact that a very painful stomach symptoms happen shortly before death. But again, there was no evidence that any of these deaths would link Belle to them, so she was left to continue on living her life now as a widow and the beneficiary of a large sum of money. She bought a 42-acre farm. That's where I lived a very short period of time before another tragic fire broke out, and this time I went clean to part of the farm, and there was an insurance payout to Belle from that as well. In 1902, Belle remarried. This man was a local butcher by the name of Peter Gunnis, where she would get her last name that she's infamous for. Peter's first wife died of natural causes, and the widower had two daughters from the marriage. As we all know, anything under the care of Belle is, has one step in the grave. 
Peter's youngest daughter would die under mysterious circumstances. To find what the actual cause of death was, it probably was something like explainable for the police to be like, hey, we're not investigating this. But this actually caused Peter to become suspicious of Belle, and so he sent his oldest daughter to go live with relatives, where she could not be within reach of Belle's wrath. December of the same year that they married, Peter died in an accident in his meat shop with a meat cleaver. It said that a meat cleaver fell from a top shelf, hitting him on the head and killing him instantly. However, Jenny Olson, Belle's foster child, would go around and tell her classmates at school, My mama killed my papa. She hit him with a meat cleaver and he died. Don't tell a soul. Yikes. Like, I don't know why no one thought that, thought that was like a serious accusation because that's really suspicious, but again, it was a child, so maybe they just thought she's just making things up. This time, however, the doctor that conducted the autopsy of Peter would find even more evidence of poisoning. Unfortunately, this was not enough to charge Belle because there wasn't enough evidence, even though the doctor was completely sure that he was poisoned. And she was allowed to live her new life as a single woman. Six months after Peter's death, the Belle would receive another life insurance payout, a life insurance policy which she took out in Peter before he died. At this time, she also gave birth to their son, Philip Gunness. Belle took to placing ads in the local newspapers, advertising herself as a wealthy widow who was looking for a new suitor. Now, men from all over the country got these ads and they were like, okay, let's just go. I mean, that's the thing they did in the 1800s, go marry for money. But it's the key thing here is that she would tell these suitors in their letters to each other that they should bring all of their finances and also they should not tell a single soul where they are going. So Belle's plan was once they got to her farm where they were going to stay with her, she would have them take out a... She would have them pay her bank account to get a share of the farm. And once this was completed, they would be poisoned and Belle would chop up their bodies and throw them to the pigs. And after the poisoning, as if to just make sure they were dead, she would beat them with a meat cleaver, which I find, yeah, she definitely killed Peter. This trap let on for years with suitors coming in and just never being seen or heard from again. And this all accumulated and ended as soon as another fire, a mysterious fire, broke out on the farm. This time all of Belle's children's bodies were found in the flames. Not a single one made it out alive. The only child to ever survive Belle was her stepdaughter who was sent away to live with relatives by her father. A woman's body was found in the basement of the farmhouse without a head, so people would just assume that it was Belle, and they thought maybe she had been murdered or something. A short while after the fire, a man searching for his brother, who had been one of the suitors of Belle, came to the farm and searched for answers. I'm going to try to pronounce his name, and I, again, I apologize if I'm not pronouncing this right. Azo Helgelian. Now, Azel went to the farm and he was in search for any evidence that his brother had been there and he couldn't find any. And this is when he became, came to the conclusion that his brother was murdered by Belle. How it just made sense since his brother told him that he was taking all of his money and going to go to this woman's farmhouse and then he was never heard from again. And these brothers were really close, so as soon as he got, stopped getting in contact with him, Azel knew that something was wrong. So Azel actually went to the police and made a formal complaint, and the police were forced to do an inquiry. The first, step, the first step of their investigation was to go to the farmhouse and just try to look around and see if there's anything that would give evidence to where Azel's brother was. When the police got to the pig pen, they made a very gruesome discovery. They saw many mounds in the pen where it looked like the soil had been recently dug up and then covered over again. And once they investigated what was in those pits, they realized they were shallow graves. And the first one that they opened up had the head, hands, and feet of Azel's brother. And Azel had to identify his brother's remains from the head. In all, 11 graves were found and all had just body parts thrown together in bags. And the one thing that seemed consistent was that Belle had chopped off all the heads to bury it separately from the body. And all these 11 bodies were found in various stages of decomposition, which led the investigators to believe that, yeah, Belle had been killing many, many men. 
Another body sadly was found to belong to Jenny Olson, the foster child who was promised to be taken care of by Balagonis. I don't know why she was killed separately from the other children. Maybe it was because it wasn't actually her child and she just, I don't know. But that's the only information I could find. They never told us like why that child died or if it was before or after the other children died in the fire. As soon as local newspapers got wind of what had been found at the Gunnis farm, there was a media frenzy and they had titled her Indiana Ogress and Female Bluebeard. This is the name given to her and it's named after the famous pirate who was vicious and hungry for gold, which Belle was both. But people still had the conclusion that Belle had died in the fire even though suspicions were flying because there was no head found. The main suspect that they could find for the fire was Ray Lemphier, the farmhand who had been hired by Belle. Now Lemphier was an alcoholic and could not remember large parts of his life and people were like, um, how could all this murdering be happening without you realizing anything? And Ray just came out and said, you know, I, ha I am an alcoholic and I lose track of like time and space and like I honestly did not know. Now we can't be sure if he did or not did not know, but I mean he was being paid by Belle, so it is possible that she was paying him for, to keep the secret. In the end, Ray could only be charged with arson and not the murders. However, then the punishment for arson was a 21 year prison sentence. While in prison, Ray would come down with a bad case of tuberculosis and on his deathbed he would admit that Belle had asked him to go to Chicago to find a housekeeper and bring that housekeeper back for Belle. And this is thought to be the body that was found in the basement decapitated. Though it was never concluded officially whether or not Belle had died, there were rumors that she had started her life over again. In 2008, there was an attempt to compare the DNA of Belle's living relatives to the body that was discovered in the basement. However, the DNA was very degraded and they could not conclusively say if it was Belle's remains or not. And let me say that's just really frustrating. However, it is believed that Belle did go and live out her life somewhere else. And one of the theories is that she changed her name. In 1931, Esther Carlson had died while awaiting trial on the poisoning of a man. It is said that she bore an amazing resemblance to Belle Gunness. Even more, it said that Esther had photos of Belle's children in her possessions when she died, which I don't know if that's true or not or just a rumor, but you can't be sure since it was such a long time ago and things do get lost in translation and people, as they're telling the stories, they like to make them more interesting, so take that with a grain of salt. That Belle Gunness has killed anywhere between 14 and 40 people in her lifetime, both as Belle Gunness and as Esther Carlson. That is a lot of families who have never gotten closure. I mean, most of these suitors were unidentified because, again, no one, it wasn't, it was back in the day before we had the media, we couldn't plaster their faces all over Facebook or anything like that. So, like, how were these families supposed to find out what happened to their suitors? So, yeah, it's very unfortunate. There is no happy ending to this story. There's nothing tied up in a bow. It is unsolved. Technically, even though I am pretty inclined to believe that Belle had turned herself into Esther and she is now dead. However, if she did die in that barn, or if she had died in waiting trial as Esther, there's still no conclusive ending. She was never charged, never had to pay for her crimes. It seems like Belle did get away with multiple murders. And this is why she And this is why she's named as one of the most infamous black widows in history and one of the most notorious women serial killers. I think the most tragic thing is that the very children that were supposed to be under her care and nurtured by her were the lives that she had taken. Like, I just can't imagine what it takes for a mother to kill her own children. She must have been a sociopath. I mean, if she was profiled today, I'm pretty sure she would be a sociopath. I mean, she did not care about these children. She only just saw them as a means to an end. And I just find that really heartbreaking, no matter how old this case is. I hope you guys thought, found that video interesting. If you want to see more information about it, I did find these just Googling, you know, like on the internet. And it's a very heartbreaking case, but it also is very interesting. And I think that it's important that people know about it because, you know, all we hear about are the men in history that are serial killers. It stands to show you that evil is not a new invention. And there were dark, dark souls in every time period.